Losing in mixed martial arts is just part of the journey. Unless you're Habib Nurmagomedov, then it's not part of your journey. But for everyone else, including the all-time greats, losses can and do happen. This isn't a sport that lends itself very well to staying unbeaten when in an instant about can end. Normally, the losses the best fighters in the sport suffer are to other fighters of equal caliber. But on occasion, a loss sticks out like a sore thumb on an otherwise nearly flawless record, and today we're going to explore 10 such defeats that when looked back at knowing how the two competitors' careers would play out, makes you scratch your head figuratively and say, how in the hell did that happen? I'm Tommy from MMA On Point, and these are 10 baffling losses in epic fighters' careers. Number 10, Dennis Bermudez defeats Max Holloway. There are exactly four people who have ever beat Max Holloway in the UFC. Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, Alexander Volkanovsky, and Dennis Bermudez. One of these things is not like the others. Looking at Blest's performance on ABC against Calvin Cater, it's incredible to think that anyone has ever beaten that man, but five fights into his UFC tenure, right before the notorious loss to McGregor, which would lead to Max going on a 13-fight win streak that included featherweight gold, he suffered a split-decision loss to Bermudez. The fight was close very close. Joe Rogan thought Holloway would get the nod, but it was too close for the judges to see it that clearly, and that's a reflection of how well Bermudez took it to the rising star. After that victory, Dennis would continue to build up steam, winning three more in a row for having his title hopes squashed in back-to-back -back losses to Ricardo Lamas and Jeremy Stevens. It's here that Holloway would truly start to pull away, making this loss just confusing when looked back at in hindsight. Bermudez would lose four of his next six before retiring following a victory on the early prelims of the first ESPN card in 2019. By that time, Max had already twice defended his featherweight title. Number 9. Joe Duffy Defeats Conor McGregor when Joe Duffy and Conor McGregor fought at Cage Warriors 39 in 2010, The Notorious was less than two years away from achieving double champ status in that promotion before entering the UFC and changing the fight game forever. But it was Duffy who looked to be the next big thing out of Ireland. Prior to his bout with McGregor, Joe had defeated Norman Park via a first round submission and was even invited to the tough season 12 preliminary bouts to get into the house, but was defeated by Kyle Watson. Duffy made quick work of Conor, scoring an arm triangle choke after an early takedown in just 38 seconds. It was then that their paths would diverge. Both would continue to compete for Cage Warriors, McGregor capturing the feather and lightweight titles before setting the UFC on fire. Duffy would go on a respectable run for CW but never captured gold. In March 2015, at the height of Conor Mania, he would be brought into the UFC, touted as the last man to beat the Notorious. McGregor called Joe a journeyman following his interim title win over Chad Mendez. Hype around an eventual rematch between the two would fade in time. Conor would go on to be Conor, and Duffy would never reach the heights thought possible by his early success over such a massive star, never really getting beyond the mid-card, ending his run in the promotion on three straight losses, his best win a submission over Mitch Clark. Number 8. John Lober Defeats Frank Shamrock you may not know it today because they pretend he doesn't exist, but for a brief time before the promotion was owned by Zufa LLC, Frank Shamrock was arguably the greatest champion in UFC history. It also didn't help that his successor Tito Ortiz would beat his record for title defenses. The point here, though, is that Frank Shamrock was really good at fighting, and while competing for Pancrase, he would regularly suffer losses to some of the top fighters in Japan, he pretty much mopped the floor with everyone else for nearly a decade when he finally came stateside. With the exception of one man, John Lober, a Jeet Kune Do fighter out of Huntington Beach, California, yes I said Jeet Kune Do, as in the martial art created by Bruce Lee. It was Lober's fourth ever career bout. Shamrock had his run in Japan, and this would be his first fight in the United States at Super Brawl 3. We are less than a year away from his UFC title run, and yeah, he got beat. It wasn't a fluky fight, it was a strong back and forth, a lot of grappling. In the end, the bout would go to Lober via split decision. After that, John would lose five of his next six before getting a rematch with Frank at UFC Brazil, the last major moment of his career. This time, Shamrock's improved striking was just too much, overwhelming Lober and forcing him to tap from the onslaught. Number 7. Valentin Overeem Defeats Randy Couture the legendary career of Randy Couture is filled with highlights and even his losses were generally on a grand scale, half of them coming in title fights. We're talking the best of the best. One of his defeats, however, doesn't exactly fit into that mold. By the time The Natural met up with Valentin Overeem, that's the older brother of the horse-eating heavyweight we all love so much, he was a UFC tournament winner and two-time heavyweight champion. He'd already established himself as one of the best talents in the sport. And while he would go on to do a whole bunch more after his fight with Valentin, his opponent would not. Overeem would end his career on a 
seven fight losing streak in 2014, finishing with a record of 32 and 34, having never held a title in any major promotion. He beat Randy Couture though, didn't even take a whole minute. It's the Rings King of Kings 2000 tournament, three fights in one night to determine the champion. Couture and Valentin would meet in the semifinals. After an early takedown, the two would jockey for position before Randy gets caught in a guillotine choke and is forced to tap. That's it. 56 seconds in and Captain America is going home. Overeem would lose to Big Nog in the finals later that night, but he can always claim a win over arguably the best fighter he or his brother ever fought. Number 6. Stefan Struve defeats Stipe Miocic I hadn't watched this fight in a long time. Truthfully, the last time I watched it was the first time I watched it when it happened back in September of 2012. But I must tell you, it's truly a bizarre experience coming back to this bout today and watching a man that many are considering the greatest all-time heavyweight getting absolutely pieced up by Stefan Struve. Stipe Miocic was only four fights into his UFC career, the glory of his future a good ways away still, but a talent enough to headline a card. UFC on Fuel TV 5 from Nottingham, England. Nottingham. Nothing says Robin Hood like Stipe versus Struve. Stefan was the established talent in this bout, having already fought 11 times in the UFC. The early going was every bit of why Stipe became who he is today. Really crisp boxing in the first round. He looked fantastic. The second round, however, devolved quickly, with both fighters getting wobbled repeatedly. Struve started pouring it on Miocic with about 90 seconds left, and TKO'd the future champion in spectacular fashion. The bout earned the pair fight of the night. I doubt Struve realized he'd just scored the biggest win of his entire career. I'm sure he also also didn't imagine that he would lose 8 of his next 12 fights, while the guy he just finished would go on to be an all-time great. Number 5. Daiju Takase defeats Anderson Silva when you watch Pride 26 and see Anderson Silva lose via a triangle choke eight and a half minutes into the first round to Daiju Takase, you were seeing the absolute low point of his entire career. He'd lost before, he'd lost since, but nothing like this. His first ever defeat was in his third pro fight. He barely knew what he was doing. The loss to Ryo Chonin, an absolute Hail Mary submission. Yushino Kami and a legal upkick, Silva defeated himself. After that, you're going to have to wait until Chris Weidman dethrones the middleweight king at UFC 162 to discuss another loss. The spider was expected to walk right through Daiju Takase. Anderson had won three straight in pride, he was a shoot box fighter, Vanderlei cornering him for this bout. Takase's big claim to fame was beating the 600-pound Emmanuel Yarborough. He came into the Silva fight with a record of 4-7-1. He would end his career 12-15-2. Make no mistake about it, his domination of Anderson is without question the first story he's telling his grandkids when they ask about his fight career. Silva got in virtually no offense before the embarrassing submission finish. The loss was so devastating, Anderson was going to quit the sport had the Nogueras not convinced him to continue. Daiju Takase almost ended one of the greatest fighters of all time's careers. If that doesn't make him worthy of this list, I'm not sure what does. Number 4. Alexis Davis defeats Amanda Nunes it's well established that Amanda Nunes is the greatest female fighter in history. You wouldn't find many to dispute her GOAT status, but she has a loss to a fighter on the current UFC roster that you might not expect. Alexis Davis is a solid fighter. She has several impressive name wins, earned an ill-fated title fight with Ronda Rousey. Since then, she's lost four of seven, and Nunes has rose to prominence. But in September of 2011, at Strikeforce Barnett versus Karatanov, she beat the greatest of all time. In fact, she beat her up bad. Nunes was expected to win going into the bout. She came in on a six fight win streak and had just KO TKO'd Vanessa Porto, Edian Gomes, and Julia Budd. Her KO of Budd just 14 seconds into their bout. The idea that Davis would win and win with strikes was absurd. She'd only ever had one TKO victory and in the second fight of her career. Things were fairly back and forth until late in the second round. Nunes took the fight to the ground but was reversed, and from there she would be mounted, get her back taken, and brutally beaten until the ref had to call it. The hematoma on the side of her head, gigantic. While the evolution of Amanda Nunes would take a bit more time, and feature a few more losses, this one in particular stands out like that knot on the champ champ's head. Number 3. Brad Pickett defeats Demetrius Johnson that's right, good old One Punch himself with his signature Trilby hat. Demetrius Johnson is one of the greatest fighters in the entire world today and in the history of mixed martial arts. These are the facts of the case and they are undisputed. The man doesn't trip up much, and when he does, it's to certified legends like Dominic Cruz or Henry Cejudo. That's actually the entire list of his losses, with the exception, of course, of Brad Pickett at WEC 48. DJ entered the promotion unbeaten at 10-0. All the pieces were already there. He was fast as hell. He was technically sound. Matt Hume was in his corner. It would only be a 
year later, he's fighting Cruz for the Bantamweight title. So this isn't exactly some kind of version of DJ that isn't ready for prime time. Pickett was 19 and four going into the bout. He'd already scored a WEC win in his debut the previous December. This one wasn't even close. Brad tossed DJ all around the canvas for most of the fight. He landed four slams in the first. He even got Mighty Mouse in a crucifix. More slams in the second. He would mount him in the third. Pickett would win 30-27 on two of the three judges' scorecards. He just straight up took it to him. DJ would go on, of course, to be DJ, and Pickett would have 16 more pro fights, losing 10 of them, his best win in that era, probably Neil Siri. Number two, Matt Serra defeats George St. Pierre. Now question the most famous entry on our list, it's one of the greatest upsets of all time. George St. Pierre had finally gotten over his awe of Matt Hughes and captured the welterweight title. His legendary run as champion and one of the all-time greats the sport has ever seen was set to begin but for a single hiccup at UFC 69, the last time GSP would ever taste defeat. Matt Serra wasn't supposed to beat St. Pierre. He normally would have had no chance to even fight him. With a UFC record of 4-4, four four, Serra wasn't exactly setting the sport on fire before the Ultimate Fighter comeback season. Tough 4 was a unique chance chance for those who had struggled in their career to have a resurgence, not only on the popular show, but in a title fight should they win the tournament. And Matt Serra did just that, defeating Chris Lytle in the finals. Everyone knew that Matt had a world-class deadly ground game, but it was believed that St. Pierre would keep the fight standing and light up the shorter fighter. The champion was about a minus 500 favorite at the start of the horn, but that wouldn't last long. GSP completely underestimated Serra's ability and power, getting clipped early, never recovering from a barrage that would finish the champ about midway through the first round. I get goosebumps no matter how many times I watch it. GSP would refocus and reclaim his title in their second encounter, but you can never take that moment away from Matt Serra. Number one, Dennis Hallman defeats Matt Hughes, twice. If you do a quick Google search of Dennis Hallman and click the Images tab, what you're going to get is a whole bunch of pictures of a Speedo. Despite a respectable MMA career, including a lightweight title shot at UFC 33, his choice of attire at UFC 133 is pretty much the only thing he's known for. What he should be known for is beating Matt freaking Hughes twice. You know how many people have ever beat Matt Hughes twice? Three. Two of them are BJ Penn and GSP. And Hallman did it first, and he did it in a combined 37 seconds. Victory number one, you can chalk up his early career fodder. Hughes was just five fights in as a pro, he failed on a takedown and got caught in a standing guillotine choke. The whole thing took 17 seconds before Matt goes sleepy night-night. Their second encounter is less easily dismissed. It's UFC 29, Hughes hasn't lost since their first fight. He's racked up 18 wins in that time. In less than a year, he captures the UFC welterweight title and begins his epic run as champion. In the rematch, he secures the takedown he failed to execute in their first fight, only to catch an armbar and lose in 20 seconds. The next time Hughes loses a fight, he's a bonafide legend, dropping the title title to BJ Penn at UFC 46. So next time somebody brings up Speedo Man, you make sure they put some respect on his name. Huge shout out to Max Randall for editing this video together. Follow him on Twitter at Max underscore Randall. A big, big thank you to Ben Rosette, who provided that sweet tune you heard in the intro. Check out his music by clicking the link in the description and go give him a follow on his Instagram and Twitter page at Ben Rosette. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and subscribe. We've got three new videos or more for you every single week. Let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. Follow On Point MMA on Twitter and have yourself a wonderful day.